Afternoon, town downers everywhere. I, I, is it my imagination or recently all that they all all a bit wild? This crowd in here. They are wild. They are. They you are. don't know where we got them from, do you? <laughs> <laughs> but why don't we do a check out? We'll ask Dudley to run amok amongst them and <laughs> check out where they all come from. Anyway, they're here and they're they're good. But I've got an email from. This is a guy who's a regular contributor with emails, and this is from Bert Arter. I'm not yep. sure where he's from. At her husband's marriage seminar at his local church in New York, the priest asked Luigi on his upcoming 50th wedding anniversary to take a few minutes to share some insight into how he managed to stay married to the same woman all those 50 years. Luigi replied to the audience, Well, I've tried to treat her well, spend the money on her, but at the best is I took her to Italy for the 25th anniversary. Lovely. Well, the priest immediately commented up, Luigi, you're an amazing inspiration to all the husbands here. Please tell the audience what you're planning for your 50th anniversary. And Luigi proudly replied, I'm going to go and get her. Oh. <laughs> 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 He comes up with some goodies, that Bert Harder. Thank That's you, Bert, right. wherever you are and whoever you are. <laughs> right, now, this is a big day for Tim. Uh, this is it. This is the test. This is the Octo-Champ test. You've won seven, and you're here for the eighth time. We wish you luck. You have to get past this lady. I've got a feeling she may be a dark horse. Not that I'm calling him a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I'm you could just be the one that could trip him up on the last fence here. This is Jenny Ferris. Joins us from Wooden Bassett in Wiltshire, where she's a semi-retired teacher. And she's married with two children and two stepchildren, enjoys travel, quizzes, gardening in her award-winning garden. Oh. You won an award? I did, yes. The local Bassett in Bloom competition Bassett some years ago. Bassett in Bloom? Yes, yeah, some years ago. Oh, I love that. Uh, right. Lovely. Jenny says her ambition is to comp complete her list of things to do before she goes on. Oh. Uh. No. You can tick off, be a contestant on Countdown. Well, that was one of them. That was one of them. Well, let's hope it's a happy tick, that one. Okay, so say, well done and happy, happy game for Tim and for Jenny. You're going to play today. Well, today we expose the uh, secret obsession of our man in Dictionary Corner. Yes. He has a passion for all things hot and steamy. He is a lover of trains. <laughs> yes. So drawing into the studio aboard the Countdown Express, sitting next to our word inspector, Susie Dent, please welcome back for the last time this time around, Nicholas Owen. <laughs> you did tell us a little about that love of trains last week, didn't you? I did. I, we, we got onto the subject a bit, didn't we? Yes. yes. He's yes. also keen on trolley buses. He, yes. He's written a book about the, the, the whole definition and origin of trolley buses. Oh, Absolutely. Well, you're in the right place for that. In I, here, am, I am. I Have am. Have they got well, trolley buses here? Well, they, it was the last place to get rid no, of them. No, no, a Bradford last place. Oh, there. sorry. Oh. You see, he's an authority on such mm. things. 1972. <laughs> oh, night old. Anything else you want to know about trolley buses? <laughs> not, not just now. <laughs> oh. What I want to do is play the game and as to our players. So here we go. And Tim's going to start his little journey towards that octogen. Octo Champ title with these letters. Consonant, please. M. Consonant. N. Consonant. Thank you, Tim. R. Consonant. D. Vowel. A. Vowel. E. Vowel. O. Consonant. P. Vowel. And O. Right, here's the clock. What sort of a start, Tim? Eight. Eight, that's a good start. Jenny? Only seven, I'm Only afraid. Only seven. What's the seven? Doorman. Doorman? Yes. Yep. And the eight? Pomanda. Pomanda. Yeah. Pomanda? Pomanda. We have oh. excellent. Well done. Yeah. Oh. Very, what very is pomanda? good. What is pomanda? What is that? 
Define it for us, Susan. Okay, um, it is, I remember my grandmother used to have one of these. It's a ball or container which had little holes in it. It was perforated and full of aromatic um, oh. substances. Oh, I know Carol knows the oranges, don't you? Yes, yeah, so in uh, Elizabethan days, didn't they used to wear orange because they, they whiffed a bit. Yeah. So they used to wear oranges with cloves stuck in, mm. stuck in them. Right, and just sort of around, don't they? In the meantime, what <laughs> has the corner got to offer? Same no. thing. Same, Same thing. thing. We were looking at, um, uh, Nick had pomade and we were looking at the link and it comes from apple and pomade used to be made of apple. Uh -huh. All sorts of links. Oh. And right. did you know that Elizabeth I was known for um, having the uh, height of sort of, uh, of cleanliness and she used to take a bath once a month. Mm. Really? Yes, absolutely. Oh, what a waste yeah. of water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eight points to Tim and nothing to, uh, not at the moment, but I'm sure Jenny's going to be on that board soon. So let's put some letters up there. Uh, may I have a consonant, please, Carol? You may. We start with S. And another consonant. N. Vowel. E. Consonant. P. Vowel. I. Vowel. E. Consonant. S, consonant, R, and another consonant, and B. And here's that clock. Jenny? Uh, six. Six for you and Tim? Seven. Seven. Right, Jenny, let's have the six. Spines. Spines and Tim? Repines. 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 Repines, yes, which is to fret or to express discontent. Yeah, okay. What's okay. happening there in the corner? Well, Something we've, good? we've got one better. We've got eight. Ripeness. Mm. Ripeness. Is that eight? Mm. Yes, yes, it, it is. is. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, no. uh, he's off to a lead, uh, 15 playing zero at the moment, but that's going to change. Uh, Tim, we need you to put some more letters up there. Consonant, please. T. Consonant. S. Consonant. D. Vowel. A. Vowel. E. Vowel. O. Consonant. P. Consonant. H, vowel, and a vowel, and I. And one more clock. Tim, what this time? Seven. Seven. And Jenny? One less again, I'm afraid. Hosted. Ho hosted, right. Yes. Six, six there, hosted. Yes, six. And uh, seven? Adipose. I spell that? A D I P O S E. Adipose. Brilliant. Adipose. It means inclined to put on fat on your body. <laughs> inclined to fatness. Well done. <laughs> Got something else over there we can add Yes, to? That, that last one does not apply to Susie, does it, at all. Yes. Um, we've got well, it did for a few months. It did. <laughs> well, <laughs> definitely did. Uh, we have another, we have eight, we think, here. Yeah. Well, yes. we do, definitely. Pit heads. Yes. Pit heads, oh, very as good. As in the collieries and so forth. Excellent. Yes. <clears throat> the corner is doing very well this game. A couple of eights there already. And the score is 22. And uh, we're going to get Jenny off the mark, I think, this time. We've got a funny feeling. Some letters, please, Jenny. Come on, Jenny. Uh, Consonant, please. Consonant. There we go. R. And another consonant. N. And vowel. And U. And a consonant. G. And another consonant. S. And vowel. E. And a vowel. And I. And a consonant. W. 
And another consonant. And that is Y. And here's the clock. Seven. Seven. And Tim? Seven. Seven. All right, Jenny, what's your seven? Wingers. Wingers. Yep. Is that we football wingers? Probably yes, would be, wouldn't it? And ones. Tim? Swinger. Swinger. <laughs> <laughs> wingers and swingers. Interesting. Right, both of those are going to score points, and that puts Jenny on the board. Right, what have we got in the corner? Uh, no, we can't do better than that. Uh, we have one more. We, we didn't have reusing, did we? No. Reusing, but seven again. Seven again, yeah. reusing. Right, 29 playing seven. Mm -hmm. It's numbers time, and... Tim's going to uh, give some instructions to Carol. An inverted T, please. <coughs> T, it's worked so far for you, Tim. Let's see about today. The numbers, then, to play around with are 10 and 3, 5, 9 and 5, and 75, with a target of 737. And here's that clock. Right, 737, Tim. 737. Seven. You got that, and Jen? 737. Let's ladies first, please. 75 times 10, 750. It is. 5 plus 5 plus 3 is 13. Yep. Take it away. I'll take them all away. 737. That's right, Tim. No, I feel like I've made a mistake. You've made a mistake. Oh. Oh. Well, you saw it quick <laughs> enough, so that's the 10 points to, to Jenny. Which uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is. Makes it interesting now. 29 playing 17, so the game's very much on again. As we say, uh, for the last time, uh, the, this trip with us, uh, Nicholas, what are you going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to talk about it, the sort of small difficulties that one sometimes gets into. This has happened to me. Um, when you go through the streets in, in any city, um, certainly um, north of England, south of England, wherever you are these days, an awful lot of people sort of putting hands out, wanting things, you know, begging in many cases. Uh, sometimes they're doing something for it, which is great, you know, they're playing an instrument or, or something of the sort, or perhaps trying to sell you something. But the difficulty arises, doesn't it, when they're trying to sell you something and you really don't want it. And how do you deal with that? And I had a, a rather embarrassing uh, episode uh, a little while ago. I was walking through a street in London and um, a chap came towards me and uh, he was selling the big issue, you know, the homeless magazine and I, I really didn't want a copy of the big issue it wasn't so much I didn't want a copy of it I didn't like the look of him he just had that kind of rather came with what they used to call the hairy eyeball you know looked a bit sort of leery so I thought no I'll just keep walking so as I walked towards him he said big issue mate is how he put it which very friendly of him but I decided to carry on I just carry on walking and as I got level with him he said big issue I said big issue and I just thought, oh, I'll keep walking. But he, his voice was rising, and one or two people beginning to notice this. And I got a little bit further down the street. It's quite a long way away from him by this time, about 10 or 20 yards. And he said, big issue. And I sort of, he said, I'm an ex-service man, you know. And by this time, there was quite a lot of people gathered in that street, kind of looking in my direction. And I felt really awful. And I thought, no, I've got to, you get committed, you know, I'll carry on. And I must have walked, I must have been at least 50 yards away from him. And at the top of his voice, this man called out, Big issue, mate. You hypocrite, Jeremy Paxman. <laughs> you should tell Jeremy that story. So I tell you what does niggle me a little bit, and you like to think you're a bit tolerant of such things, but the squeegees, you know, the guys who come and clean your window. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but by it's worse in New York, they have a sponge, a bucket, and a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of say, yes, okay, use the sponge and the bucket. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, tea time teaser here. 
And the word on the card is raw bison. That's R-A-W-B-I-S-O-N, raw bison. And the clue, Richard of York gave battle in vain twice. Richard of York gave battle in vain twice. The word was Robison, and the clue Richard of York gave battle in vain twice, and the answer is rainbows. Mm. Do you get That's that? That's the mnemonic, isn't it? Exactly. And I was getting a quote here of the, the actual words from our school teacher. What are the actual words? Uh, it's the uh, rainbow colours, red, orange, as the yellow. first letters Richard of the R O Y. Orange, yellow, black. There you are. <laughs> Stay tuned. You learn a lot on the oh, show. Yeah. You do, you do. Right, back to the game. 29, 17 to Jenny, 29 to Tim. Jenny's going to put some letters up there. A consonant, please, Carol. Thank you, Jenny. K. And another consonant. Another please. one. M. And a vowel. O. And another vowel. I. Consonant. F. Consonant. M. Vowel. E. Consonant. C. And a vowel. And a vowel, thank you. And O. Right, here's the clock. Tough to me. What have we got there, Jenny? Um, I'm going to declare um, six. Six. Pretty good, I reckon, looking at that board. What have you got, Tim? Six. Six. Let's have your six, Tim. Cookie. Cookie. Oh, good one. Yes. And mine's commie. Commie. Commie, as in short for communist. It is capitalised, I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah, bad oh, luck. But, Shame. So bad cookie luck. gets it. Yeah. Right, the and then... No, we couldn't do better cookie for us as well. Yeah. It was yeah, awful. Quite a nice four. Pardon? You've got Quite a nice, a nice four. four. Wow. <laughs> oh, yes. But just mook, M-O-O-K, which in America is a stupid or incompetent person. You mook. A mook? mook. Yeah. I didn't know that. Quite there nice. you go. <laughs> All right. 35 playing 17 now, and uh, Tim's back with some more letters to get on the board. Consonant, please. P. Consonant. X. Consonant. N. Vowel. A. Vowel. I. Vowel. E. Consonant. S. Vowel. O. Consonant. And N. Right, here's the clock. Tim, what do you have? Nine. Nine? Mm, well, there you go. With the X in it, you've got nine? Oh, goodness gracious me. What have you got, Jenny? Oh, only five, I'm afraid. Only five, we have to hear that. What's it's spine. Your... Spine. Right, let's have a drum roll. <laughs> What's your nine? Expansion. Yeah. Expansion. Yeah. Very good. Good boy. Well done. Certainly doing that. <laughs> right, let's expand to the scoreline quite a lot. 53 playing 17. But uh, Jenny's still not out of it yet, so let's have some letters from you, Jenny, please. Uh, consonant, please, Carol. C. And another one. Q. And a vowel. And E. And a vowel. O. And a consonant. J. Oh. And a vowel. U. Well done. And a vowel. I. And a consonant. Oh, everyone's groaning about this selection. D. And another consonant. Thank you, Jenny. T. Right, here's the clock.
right, Jenny? Six. Six. Pretty good, I'd say. Six. Six. Jenny? Quoted. Quoted. Yep. Quoted. And you've got quoted as well there. Will you check that, please? I shall. Quoted. Yes, it's there. Yes. Right, 59 playing 23, and uh, Tim's going to put some letters on the board. Consonant, please. S. Consonant. T. Consonant. C. Vowel. E. Vowel. A. Vowel. E. Consonant. L. Consonant. G. Vowel. And O. Right, one more clock. Tim, not another nine. What have we got? Seven. Seven. That's not bad. Jenny? Six. Six. Let's have a six. Cleats. Cleats. Mm -hmm. Cleats. And the seven? Locates. Locates. That's obviously good. Excellent. Right. Uh, Susie. Uh, there is an eight there. Gel coats. Or Gel one word. coats? Yeah. G-E-L-C-O-A-T-S, which are the smooth, hard polyester resin surfaces um, of a fibreglass structure. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, well, we're looking at words that we don't know, or origin of words. Origin of words, I'll get that right. Origin of words. And there's an interesting one. It's stool pigeon you're going to go with. Yeah, stool pigeon. Um, and if you look up in this dictionary and most modern dictionaries, you'll find that um, the origin suggested is that of a pigeon that was nailed to a tree stump, um, which was used as a decoy, so to attract other birds. But um, there's a wonderful etymologist called Michael Quinion, and he's done a bit more delving into it because he's found instances going way, way back of stool pigeon. And he looked at all the words for, um, to describe a decoy, and one of those was stale, S-T-A-L-E, or stale, if you like. Um, and that meant um, a pigeon that was used to entice a hawk into a net. Um, and that was around at the end of the 15th century, and by sort of 100 years later, it was used to mean a person who was used to entrap somebody else. Um, and then its next journey was um, the spelling stall. And this is where we get stall for time from, because a stall was um, pickpockets jargon for a pickpockets accomplice. So all of this is a sort of decoy idea, and the pigeon idea is just a pigeon has been used for centuries to mean a dupe, you know, somebody who allowed themselves to be um, used, really. So stall pigeon was from that stool, the decoy, and pigeon, the sort of the dupe. Yeah. Um, and it, I'm sure that pigeons were nailed to tree stumps and things, but that came much, much later. Mm. So the stool pigeon goes back almost 400 years. And we've learned about stool pigeons. We know about pigeon stools. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> enough said. <laughs> we're not, not, we'll move straight, swiftly on to uh, our numbers board. And Jenny, will you give some numbers now to what Carol? What would you like, Jenny? I'd like one large and five small, please. OK, thank you. Let's see, this time it's going to be as nice. We have six, two and seven, eight and nine and 100, with a target of 739. Right, here's that clock. Seven three nine, Jenny. What do you seven have? three nine. You have that. And seven three nine. You've got that. Let's go with Jenny first. Uh, seven times a hundred. Seven hundred. Yep. Seven multiplied by one hundred. Seven hundred. Eight times six is forty-eight. Eight multiplied by the six. Forty-eight. Take away nine. Yep. It's thirty-nine, and add it on. Perfect. Yes. Seven three nine. And Tim. Hundred plus six. Hundred six. Hundred six. Times seven is seven four two. Yeah. Nine minus eight is one. Oh, I see where you're going, yep. Nine minus eight is a one, take Plus that a away. Plus a two is a three. And take away the two as well, yeah? Yeah. Okay, lovely. There yes. you go, both got ten points. <laughs> right, 
Right, we're going to a tea time teaser here, and the word here is lager tin, or it might be larger, but it's L A G E R T I N, so we say lager tin. There's three sides to this answer. That's the clue. There's three sides to this answer. The word was lager tin, and the clue there's three sides to this answer. Simple. Triangle. Mm. Triangle. Quite nice simple. clues today. Right, let's get back to the game, and Tim's going to continue with his set of letters for Carol. Consonant, please. Thank you, Tim. T. Consonant. N. Consonant. D. Vowel. E. Vowel. A. Vowel. E. Consonant. T. Consonant. D. Vowel. And U. And his clock. Tim, how are we going? Seven. Seven. And Jenny? Uh, only six, I'm afraid. Only six. Yep. What's the six? Netted. Netted. And the seven? Daunted. Daunted. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. Yep. And the corner? Yep. We, can, we can do uh, taunted for seven as well, but attended for attended. eight. Attended for eight. Eight. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Very good. <laughs> right. Once again, it'll be Jenny's turn to... Uh, Put some letters up there. So, uh, Jenny, I'm afraid it's beyond your. Uh, it is. <laughs> but you can uh, go out with a smile on your face. Let's see if we can get a few little. Uh, Consonant, scores on the board. please, Carol. L. And another one. And V. And vowel. O. And another vowel. E. And a consonant. T. Vowel. A. Vowel. O. And consonant. L. And a final consonant. And R. And here's the clock. What do you have? Six. Six and Jenny? Five. Five. Let's have the five. Love it. Love it. And uh, travel. Travel. Right. Are yes, those okay? that's fine. Love it is the muted green colour that you get in tweeds and things. Yep. Love it. And what do we have from the corner? But we could go one better than you, Tim. Seven. Overall. Overall. Excellent. Right, so that's Tim, 89, and Jenny's got 33, but Tim's going to put some more letters up there. He'll be aiming to finish off on a high with 100, I've got a feeling. There you go. Consonant. G. Consonant. R. Consonant. M. Vowel. E. Vowel. I. Vowel. U. Consonant. T. Consonant. S. Vowel. And E. Right, here's a clock. There, Tim. Seven. Seven. And Jenny? Seven. Seven. Let's have the seven. Mustier. Mustier. Yep. And the seven from Tim? Gesture. 
gesture. Very good. Both of those good, mm, yes. two good sevens. Got a seven over there? What yeah, we we're, got? we're all sevens as well. There's Gustier as well and Regime. Regime. Mm. Uh, okay, Doug. You can actually also have, and it's really ugly, um, a superlative, but germiest. Is germiest. There. The germiest. Horrible word. I know, it's horrid, isn't it? Um, but it is eight. That's eight. Oh, yeah. yes. Very yes. Good. Well done. Well Excellent. done. Right, we're uh, heading for the numbers board again, and Jenny, who whispered to me in the break, she didn't think she was going to do that well at uh, maths, but you're doing very well indeed, so let's keep that going. I'll stick with the one large and five <laughs> small, please, Carol. I don't blame you, Jenny. <laughs> right, here we go. Ten, one, and two, three, and seven, and seventy-five, and five hundred and seventy-three is what we're looking for. And here's the clock. Seven three, Jenny. Five seven seven. Okay, and Tim. Five seven two. Right, we'll go with the five seven two. Tim. Seven plus one is eight. Seven plus one gives you eight. Times seventy five. Yeah, it's six hundred. Ten three to thirty. Uh, ten multiplied by the three gives you thirty. Take that away. Yeah. It's five seventy. And then? Minus a two. And then you can, well, in effect, add it to two. Yeah. Can you get the odd one, Carol? Is that possible? Um, I'm sure that's extremely possible, and I haven't got it. I've just had a bit of a brain rush. Have you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely sure it's there about a dozen ways, but uh, okay, I'll be yeah. back. Well, well done to Tim. Oh. Uh, um, we've still got the, the conundrum to go, but he's already... Uh, hit the 100 mark with 103, so Tim, I'm sure you'd be pleased with that. But we've got this conundrum, and it's amazing how often that the loser of the game gets the conundrum right. So uh, here's wishing. Fingers <laughs> on the buzzers, Jenny, as we reveal today's countdown conundrum. Tim? Pressured. Pressured. Well, <laughs> let's have a look. Yeah. Oh. It's no pressure there. Well done. Okay, commiserations to you, Jenny, because um, you're going back to where's it? Wooden Bassett. And but you do get the goodie bag and our good wishes. And don't feel bad because you've acquitted yourself well against an octo champ because that's what you are now. Yes. An octo well Congratulations. Done. Eight eight shows. <laughs> That, of course, means you'll be joining us for the quarterfinals later on in the year, so well done, and you can relax. You don't say much, though. <laughs> no. When you come back next time, I want a few more words from you, but <laughs> you certainly know your stuff, and that Scrabble has stood you in good stead, and the maths, too. I meant to ask you before you leave, Nicholas, um, I suppose the scourge for anybody that does live TV or um, public speaking is the mobile telephone. Uh, has that ever, it happened to me in the middle of a show with a phone call. Has anything ever happened to you like that with news or whatever? Oh, yeah, oh, indeed, yes. My own phone went off once, which was pretty hideous. Not in the middle of the news? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know. It, it's rattled and I managed to stop it. But the funniest thing, or the worst really, was a, was a guest I was interviewing. It was another journalist, actually, but he was um, of the old school, shall we say. Uh, and his phone went off, and he took the phone out of his pocket, rather sort of you know, bring, bring, and then it was sort of rattling away, and he couldn't stop it. <laughs> and so I took it out of his hand, and I couldn't stop it either, so I just pulled the back off and pulled the battery out and put it, put it on the desk and carried on. <laughs> so I recommend it. If you've got a problem with a mobile phone, you know, just take them apart, they'll stop. I was at a wedding once in the middle of all the, do you take this, the phone went off for somebody in the congregation. So there you are. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed your stay with us, you know. I've had a super time. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much indeed. Well, we'll, get, we'll be back tomorrow. Before we go, I see our, our little beaver is beavering away over there. You've got that number, have you? Yeah, I got it, yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a definition, please. Carol? Well, that and that is that. <laughs> and that, take away that is that. And you do that to that. And, and you get that. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are, you see. It's full of wonderful stuff here on Countdown. <laughs> Join us tomorrow. You'll learn a lot. See you then. Bye. <laughs>
Nine o'clock tonight on Channel 4, a body shock special. A two-year-old with four arms and four legs. The girl with eight limbs who's revered as a living god. Well, next today, we do deals.